Hello there friends. Last week I showed you the differences between the selection and animate tools and some of the features of them both. And if you missed that, you can check that out up here and in the description down below. And one feature that I didn't get a chance to explain was that you can repeat movements made with the animate tool, which is great for backgrounds, whether it's a scrolling background or for clouds moving in the sky or even for characters as I did during the introduction in last week's video with the dancing tool buttons. And as this little dance is mixed with other movements, it's a bit more complicated. So I'll show you how I did that at the end of this video and how you can download this and the other projects that I used in last week's video. So do stay tuned for that. But let's start today with a simple example. So I've got a drawing of a circle here and I'll animate it to move to the right and then back to the left over a one second period. And then I'll repeat it two more times to last for three seconds in total. So first I'll extend this drawing to show for one second. That's 24 frames there. And I'll add the initial animation position on frame one. So I'll choose the animate tool, change to the position type. I'll lock the Y values here. So I'm just moving left and right. And then I'll set the first position. And then I'll set the second position on frame 12. So I'll move that over to the right. And then I'll copy this first key by selecting on it and pressing Control C and paste that at the end on frame 24. So if I loop play this, you'll see the movement. And just for demonstration purposes, I won't adjust the timing any further today. You can see the basic cycling happening there. So let's go back to frame one. So to cycle this animation, let's first extend the drawings out to frame 72, which is three seconds. And now if I loop play this, you'll see the cycle happen once and then the ball sits still for the remaining two seconds. So to extend the animation cycle, you just click this little cycle button at the right hand side of your last key. And then you'll see this wiggly line continuing along the timeline, even past where the drawings are. And this shows that the animation movements will cycle for the duration that the image is exposed in this column. So if I hit loop play on this, and you'll see the ball moves left and right continuously for those three seconds. And this might be fine for what you want to animate. And if so, great, lesson over. But between each cycle, you may not have noticed there's a little pause just for two frames. The animation appears to stutter a little, but thankfully there's another way to create a cycle that is seamless. So let me show you what I mean and the difference between these two methods. So if I switch to the schematic view up here at the top right and show the X values for this column. So just expand column one here in the function editor, click on the X, which shows all of the keys that you've added in there. And you'll see the three keys that I manually added here shown in orange with the leftmost key at the top, the right hand key in the middle and the copied first key to the end here on frame 24. And in between those keys, you'll see the interpolated values as the circle moves between the keys. And below those next to the white squiggly line are the copied repeated values. So basically these 24 values are copied after the last key, creating as many repeating cycles as you have exposed drawings. And with this copying the first key into frame 24, the first copied value on frame 25 is the same as that on frame 24. So you get no movement over those two frames and it'll give you that little stutter, which again might be okay. And the viewer might not even notice it, but you can fix it to not have this little stutter. So the quick way is simply to move the last key one frame later and then make the previous value into the final key. So to do this, just double click into that previous cell on frame 24 and then press enter, which turns that value into a key and then delete the extra key at the bottom. So now you can see that the end keys value of 45.9 or so is different from the first keys value of minus 58. 
and that minus 58 is then shown here on frame 25. So you can see there'll be a difference between those two keys and you won't get that little stutter. So now if I click loop play on that, you'll see the cycling animation without the stutter in the middle there. And if you are finding this helpful, please do give the video a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below to let me know how you'd use the animation cycling feature. But there is another way to cycle your animation and fix this duplicate key issue that you might not even know about. So if I remove the final key here and copy the first key to the end on frame 24, and then remove the cycle by clicking the cycle button here on the X sheet again. And now we can use a different form of cycling that you set up directly in the function editor. So all you need to do is to right click in any cell after the last key and then choose activate cycle. And this appears to do what the previous cycle did. And you can see it's marked on the schematic view with a wiggly line. This time it's shown in orange instead of in white. And there's no line shown on the X sheet. This color change is showing that this is repeating the orange animation keys, but in a different way. A way that understands this really is repeating, so you don't need the duplicate key values. So the second cycle actually starts from this final key, which I've got here on frame 24. So this key needs to mark the start of the cycle, which is the start of the second set of 24 frames. So we need to move that final key to start on frame 25. So really you should go from frame one through to frame 13, for the first part of the movement and then back to frame 25 where it starts again for the next cycle. So now we have a full 24 frame cycle with the first cycle going from frame 1 to 24, then from 25 through to frame 48 and then 49 down to frame 72. And if you download this project from the video on my Patreon site, you'll get to see these values and compare them yourself to see exactly how they look. So let me hit loop play on there. And now you can see again a repeating cycle working smoothly with no stutter, but with only those three keys. So this is a good way to create a repeating cycle without the hack of copying mid frame values. And using this method means we can change the length of the cycle and not have to copy a different end key. So I can just drag the end key here to a different location and this will still cycle perfectly. So that's two methods for creating simple repeating cycles. But what if you want to apply some other movement as well as a cycle to your drawing? And that's exactly what I did in my last video where I had the selection tool jump into view and then start dancing. And the animate tool did the same except the animate tool used the plastic tool to deform it and because it wasn't a repeating cycle I used a simpler method to repeat the action. So let me show you how I put that together. So here's the selection tool scene and if I scroll to the little dance which I know starts on frame 73 let me change the scale of the X sheet first at the top right here so I can see more keys much easier. And if I come down to frame 73 we can see where the animation happens for the dance. And you can see the keys that I first used to set up that dance. And if I show the keys here in the function editor, so the X, Y and rotation keys. And you'll see that I used the second technique to repeat the movement using the activate cycle option here in the function editor rather than on the X sheet or timeline. Now, how does this dance occur after the selection tool jumps into view. And no doubt you've already seen that there's no drawings behind these keys. And that's because if I show you the stage schematic at the bottom left here, you'll see that the dance column and the fall and squish columns all parent the selection tool drawing column. And that is the column with the image in it. And because all these three animation key columns parent that one column with the drawing, their keys all apply to that drawing. But to make this possible, you need one more thing, and that's to have at least one drawing in your animation key columns. And you can see that I've added one at the top here of all of the columns. 
And I don't need these extra exposures there. You only need one drawing in each animation key column. So if I scroll through the frames, you can see that the first column called Fall brings the uh, selection tool image into view. The second column Squish squashes it a little bit to make it look a bit more realistic. And then after a small pause, that's where the dance occurs. So the process to do this was to add your drawing to its own column, extend the drawing for as long as you want it to be shown, add a dummy drawing in another column. So just click to start a new level and don't draw in it. Parent that animation key column to the drawing column and then create the keys while in the animation key column. And you can do this as many times as you like. And as you can see, I've done it here with three animation key columns. And it really does help to separate your movements like this, having different movements in different columns, because it means you can adjust the timing independently of any other movements. And like I have with this loop, you can apply a repeating cycle to just one of the columns. So finally, let's take a look at the scene that's shown the introduction of the animate tool. And again, you can see I've got an animation column here called jump in with a few keys set, which shows the tool image jumping into the scene. And then I've got a plastic tool column that does the little dance. And I couldn't just use the cycle options. Instead, I went old school and just copy and pasted the keys because the first part of the movement is a little squish. And then it moves into position ready for the repeating part. And then it repeats the dance dancing from left to right. So to do that, I simply selected the keys by choosing the first key for repeating, holding shift, and then selecting the last key. And then I press control C to copy them, moved to the next cell, and then press control V to paste them in place. And I did that time after time through to the end of the animation. And if you want to look at either of these two scenes in more detail or the other six scenes that I created for the last video or the scene you've seen me working on today and the animation demo of the frames being copied, then do check out my Patreon page where members of the Teamug and Teapot tiers can download these OpenTunes projects from the video's post. And thank you to my top supporters, Maria, Rodney and Robert who along with downloading these projects all saw this video a week early. So that's how you can set up simple cycling animations. But what about a multiplane scrolling background? Well, you can check out my series of videos showing how to do that just here. And I'll see you next time for another tutorial. And that's a guarantee.